Hello, everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We're excited to have Jeff Pergolsky from Anovia Consulting. And Jeff is going to be presenting on how to launch Microsoft Teams quickly for remote work flexibility. And before I pass it over to Jeff to cover on this hot topic, I would like to remind you that we are recording this session and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. And so now I'm gonna pass it on over to Jeff to kick off our presentation. All right, thanks, Angie. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is um, Jeff Pagulski. Uh, let me advance the slide here. All right, and uh, all right, just checking. So, um, my name is Jeff Pagulski. I work out of my home office in Nina, Wisconsin. A uh, little red dot there on the map. I've been at Anovia for over 11 years now, and for eight of those years, I've been a remote worker. Today's content is going to include a high-level overview of Microsoft Teams, um, looking at the possibility of supporting remote workforces. Um, and because of that, we'll be focusing, a great deal of focus will be placed on the phone system potential in Microsoft Teams. We have seen a great deal of interest in Teams recently, and uh, that's the, the reason that uh, we're holding this, this webinar. So thanks to you all for attending. So let's get into uh, to the topics that we're looking at today. Um, we're gonna do a brief overview of Teams. We're gonna look at it um, as a potential phone system. We're gonna review licensing considerations, implementation, considerations, uh, look at some resources and, and questions. Um, now, as uh, Angie is polite enough not to say anything about this, but uh, she emailed me this morning and said, hey, Jeff, are you ready for this? Uh, we were going to have this in two weeks. Uh, it was our normal schedule, but because we've had so much interest in Teams, we decided to move it up. So she sent me an email reminder, and then of course I replied back to her, what, I thought this was in two weeks, so I'm not ready. Um, of course, that was just an April Fool's joke, so we'll um, try to have a little bit of fun um, while providing um, information for everyone. As Angie mentioned, Teams is hot. So um, Teams usage is up by 12 million in the past week. Now this is um, actually almost two weeks old now, so the numbers are even uh, more impressive. Um, 44 million daily active users. Um, now, I, I would say this week we're expecting around 50 million. Um, so, so there's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of newly remote workforces that need to be supported and need to stay connected um, to each other across their organization. So that is uh, that is exactly what uh, what Teams was built for. Um, not only is Teams hot. But Teams is also improving. So um, there are new features coming uh, to Teams before the end of, of the calendar year. Uh, and you know, of this list here, for anyone who has been using Teams, um, maybe just as an internal um, communication solution right now, um, the ability to pop out chats into a separate window is is, is really big. Um, right now, the existing Teams client can you know you can resize it as necessary, but uh, popping out individual chats would be uh, would be a helpful feature. You don't have to pick which chat you're looking at in the Teams client, so that's a big one. Um, the real-time noise suppression for minimizing background noise, they actually are using Azure artificial intelligence to do that. Um, uh, there's, I'm not sure if, if anyone has seen this, but there's a, a link to a uh, Microsoft engineer goes through and eats some potato chips while uh, on the call. He's digging through the bag and um, oops, sorry, I'm not doing that now. Um, digs through a bag of potato chips um, and, and they turn on the noise cancellation and it uh, it filters that out. Um, that's going to be built into the um, application later on in 2020. Uh, and that's just sort of, um, you know, this, I, I guess I wanted to point out the fact that Teams is improving because when you're looking at um, obviously a Microsoft solution, you understand that um, the power um, resources and money that Microsoft has invested in this and 
um, for that reason, it makes um, uh, it, it makes it a really powerful uh, potential solution because it's got the best of, of class. It's got the um, you know more R and D budget um, around teams than a lot of uh, uh, companies operating budgets in the space. So so really cool stuff that is uh, that is on the way besides uh, an already really robust application. So um, what exactly is Teams? Um, there's the, uh, the initial Microsoft team. Um, there's me trying to sneak in the back at the, uh, the Microsoft campus in Redmond last year. Um, teams is, uh, I mean, it can be a good team, um, like the Green Bay Packers. It could be a bad team. Um, luckily, Steve is muted, um, like the Chicago Bears. Um, Basically, it's a, it's a platform that allows you to communicate and collaborate across um, your entire organization in a number of different ways. So um, chat is the uh, first way and as an instant message slash chat client. Uh, it's the first way that most of us have become introduced to Teams. G remembering that um, Teams used to be Skype for Business, um, which used to be Microsoft Link which was part of uh, way back when before Office 365 was Office 365 and it was Microsoft's uh, BPOS, um, Business Productivity Online Suite. Link was a client that uh, that allowed you to communicate internally but had no um, ability to to be added in um, to the your public phone system um, until later iterations. And then obviously with Skype for Business and now Teams, you've got the ability. So, so first and foremost, um, it, it allows your team to communicate and collaborate in a number of different ways. Um, one of those ways is, um, is to host meetings. Um, this webinar that we're hosting on um, GoToMeeting will um, eventually, I assume as our uh, GoToMeeting subscription expires, will be uh, hosted in the future as a Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, and what does it give you in terms of a, a meeting client? Um, all of these, uh, all of these things. Um, you know, I think that the tightness of integration, um, being able to work from virtually anywhere and, and seamless um, chat to call to web conference, um, whether these are people within your organization or external to your organization, um, it gives you all of this. So besides a meeting, it's also a collaboration tool. So we, we've got uh, um, uh, in, this, uh, in this photo, we've got a remote team uh, connecting from multiple locations maybe from a production floor as well as a home office or a remote office. We've got a Microsoft Teams conference room uh, set up there and, and some individuals working on their um, individual devices. So um, really the, the important part of collaboration is being able to collaborate anywhere um, and, in, and on any device. So um, some of the stuff that uh, that maybe isn't utilized often, but uh, uh, just the the fun things like uh, a digital whiteboard that can actually allow multiple people to interact with it. Um, also, the ability to record meetings um, using Teams as a, a training platform. Um, all of these things just come out of the box with uh, um, with a Teams subscription, and we're going to get to uh, how you get that subscription in a few minutes here. Um, the ability to collaborate extends then into uh, um, accessing files, um, conversations, and apps in one workspace. I sometimes equate um, Teams to a, uh, um, a communication version of OneNote. Um, it's a place where you can collect everything that you need. Um, you can sub um, subset your organization to include different um, groups of individuals and um, in these uh, different groups or teams uh, within the larger organization um, keep everything you need in one spot without having to create shared folders etc you can just create a team um, you can gather email messages record video um, record meetings and keep that all in one channel it runs on microsoft's sharepoint backbone um, so it's all seamless and doesn't require IT intervention to get any of these things 
working. Um, of course, it could require IT intervention if you lock the system down to that point. And um, just like any of the other Microsoft applications, Business Central, etc., it can be as flexible or as freewheeling as you want it to be, depending on your business needs. Um, and you know, last but not least, I think the ability to uh, to call um, and use as a phone system, um, use it internally using the Teams calling feature, which um, doesn't require any additional licensing besides your Office 365 slash Microsoft 365 subscription that includes services. Um, so so you can call from anywhere and um, and pretty much on any device. Um, and, and really, I guess the important question here is, is what can Teams be? And, and we believe that it can be a really good phone solution um, with a lot of, uh, a lot of value. And, uh, and that's sort of what we're going to dive into next, um, looking at Teams as a phone solution. I will warn you that, uh, that we're not going to get um, too far in the weeds from a um, technical perspective um, as much as um, I know some of you might like to talk about SIP trunks and PSTNs and PBXs. Um, we're going to keep it at a high level. And, um, and for the questions, um, if we have any questions um, at the end that, uh, that get to um, be too technical, I will rely on our um, team of uh, Tony Taylor and Eric, um, our technology consultants, that, uh, that will help me answer those and we can take those offline. Um, Thankfully, I have been uh, in the last two weeks doing all kinds of research about the licensing and um, portability of numbers, et cetera. So I, I do know some, um, but I'm not going to go too far down that route in today's presentation. Um, basically, uh, you've got one of the strongest points, I think, of, of a Teams phone solution is that you can, you can work um, it from any device, and that means that your business phone number travels with you. So while that it's valuable to be able to communicate with your internal team on any device, um, having the ability to uh, to work from home, to work remote, um, work from a hotel room and not and not miss any of your business calls or not have to rely on them just to be forwarded to your cell phone, although they could be self, uh, forwarded to your cell phone. We're going to get into some of the features here in a minute. Um, basically, you can have a desktop phone if that's what you're used to. Um, but you don't need that. And in the case of uh, conversations with prospects about starting up a, a, a new, um, you know, a new phone solution um, uh, for a new company, I don't think that uh, that there's much that can compete with Teams. And even in a lot of cases, um, looking at existing companies that have a, a fair amount invested into an existing phone solution. Um, it still makes a strong value proposition, I think, in that world. So um, part of what has made this even more exciting is the uh, is the announcement that Microsoft Business Voice is uh, is available for um, transaction in the United States. Um, it has been a SKU that's been available in other markets, um, but it is available today, um, April first in uh, in the US market. So um, what that includes and what that allows you to do is um, convert a existing team subscription that you may already have through one of your Office 365 subscriptions. Um, it allows you to turn that team subscription into a full-blown phone solution and um, an enterprise grade phone system with built-in audio conferencing, um, a calling plan and um, and for $20 uh, a month. Um, I am going to have to work on the fact that uh, um, earlier this week, Microsoft has um, again, um, I'm saying that with a, a little bit of disdain in my voice, but again, rebranded um, and has changed Office 365 to Microsoft 365. So um, over the course of the next several weeks, watch for them to update um, uh, all of the um, names on their websites and in their offers, et cetera. Um, your invoices, I guess, will not reflect this until after April 21st, I believe, but, uh, but Office 365 is now Microsoft 365, so we better all get used to it. Um, 
so so business voice um, the uh, the ability to to call from your mobile device um, or uh, through the team's client on your mobile device and not use up any cell phone minutes or um, take a call um, forward a call to your mobile number um, without anyone uh, um, without anyone knowing that um, even doing that mid call um, it's a really flexible solution and we're going to get into uh, into those features here in a minute but uh, basically on the licensing side um, what is what does Microsoft Business Voice include um, at twenty dollars per month? Um, Three thousand minutes per user per month within the U.S. and Canada. Um, Dial-in audio conferencing for up to two hundred and fifty people per meeting, and um, and again uh, calling from anywhere on any device through Microsoft Teams. Um, and um, you know whether it's uh, desktop, mobile, web, or or a desk phone, and 24 by 7 customer support backed by Microsoft. Um, you'll see the asterisks there um, that uh, that it does include require communication taxes and fees through June 30th of 2021. That's uh, just Microsoft trying to protect uh, themselves in case uh, anything changes around tax rules in the U.S. Um, it does, uh, though, to keep in mind, it does require this this twenty dollar a month SKU has to be added on to um, an existing Office three six five plan that includes services. So there are a few Office three six five plans that only include the Office suite and don't include any services. It can't be added to those, but every other SKU it can be added to. Um, this is something new um, as of this month. It, Prior to this announcement by Microsoft, their calling plan add-ons were only available to be added to the um, more expensive and more powerful enterprise SKUs. If you were on any of the small business SKUs, um, you couldn't add phone to them, but uh, you can now. Um, and so, uh, so that's another uh, really exciting bit that we think will make it the, the value statement even more profound. The, the idea here in the 3,000 minutes, um, these, these minutes are pooled um, across your organization. So if you've got uh, 10 users and uh, six of them are heavy phone users and four of them aren't, um, those, uh, those 10 users would get 3,000 minutes each. So 30,000 minutes for all of your organization to use. And, um, and so you don't have to worry about having to buy any communication credits if you go over that number. So basically the, the who, what, and where questions, um, who is Microsoft 365 business voice intended for? Um, primarily it's designed for the small and medium sized business market um, that are seeking a modern phone system. It can be added to, um, like I said, just about any subscription. Um, E1, E3, F1, um, Business Essentials, Business Premium, and I guess I should stop there because these names are all changing. Um, basically up to um, 300 seats. Um, if you get above 300 users, then you're gonna look at their enterprise voice solution, um, sort of in the same way looking at the um, Office 365 licensing. If you get above 300 users, you're probably gonna look at an eSKU. So, so, um, so it's definitely, uh, Primarily designed for the uh, for the SMB market, small to medium sized business, um, but uh, you know that that number is uh, of what the definition I should say of what defines an SMB customer is a little bit fuzzy. So this solution goes from uh, a single user um, all the way up to enterprise. Um, what's included again? Um, the phone system, domestic calling plan, and audio conferencing. Um, the communication credits are available for adding toll-free um, additional minutes, pay per minute charges, etc. Um, and there is an optional international calling plan that includes 600 minutes per user per month. And um, again, those numbers are pooled. Um, there's also uh, there are rate sheets um, to the, for the international calling that um, are are competitive with any other um, phone provider, and those are available. Um, publicly and, and we're happy to look those up for our international, um, for our, our customers that have international calling needs. Um, we have started to look into that. So um, 
And the last question on there, the where, um, where is Business Voice available? Um, right now, it's businesses in the US, UK, and Canada. Um, and um, if you're outside of those three, you're gonna have to look to work through um, a, a partner um, to get you set up on there. So, so that's sort of the, uh, the, the value statement, um, $20 per user per month to add um, a Teams phone subscription and, um, and all that it gets to your, um, to your users and give them the ability to work um, anywhere to do their job. So, um, so then uh, one of the questions that we get is transferring um, your number to Teams. Um, is that, uh, you know, can I use my existing phone number? And, and yes, you can. And, um, and um, then you're going to start asking, how do we do that? Um, and that's going to get us down a rabbit hole. But, uh, but basically, porting numbers is, is supported. So if, you, if you're in the trial stage, um, when you sign up for a Microsoft um, Teams phone license, you get assigned a number by Microsoft. They will um, ask you for some regional information when you're filling out forms so that you get a number that, that at least makes sense. Um, but from that point on, Microsoft is your phone provider on that phone number. Um, and, uh, but you can transfer and that just involves um, uh, a form. Um, and coincidentally, it also involves a wizard um, that uh, what Microsoft refers to as the porting wizard in the Microsoft Teams admin council. So um, this is something that uh, rather than getting into the weeds and scaring everyone by showing you the admin um, uh, portal, which really isn't that complicated, but but phone systems are uh, are important. Um, and so it's uh, it's important stuff. But rather than um, you know than showing you that admin portal, thought we would just speak to it. Um, you port your numbers to Team. That the process goes through. Um, you, you fill out a port order, and that port order is um, is a document that you submit to your existing provider, and they give you the uh, um, and, and then they transfer the number to Microsoft. Um, there's of course a lot of care and due diligence when, when doing that. Um, our, our team of uh, TCs uh, are happy to help in that process, um, not because the process is, um, is technically um, involved, but more because um, getting someone else's fingerprints on the trigger to make sure that you are uh, doing what you're supposed to and that you don't lose any communication um, is, is just typical of how we support our customers in this space. But, uh, Microsoft, you know, you, you file the port, um, you start with the port wizard, you file the port order with your existing provider, and then Microsoft um, gives you um, verification that they've received the request, it's checked and updated daily, um, and we've had some, uh, some pretty quick turnaround. In some cases, I think I've heard uh, Tony from our team say that it could take up to two weeks. Um, it seems like uh, lately it's only taken a couple days to get that. Um, and then, uh, and then and you're always able to check the, uh, the status of that um, port order through the uh, admin portal. And so you know exactly in what state and who's uh, supporting your phone numbers as you go through this transition process. Another question that we get a lot is, um, what if I don't need the minutes? What if I've already got a longer term solution in place? Um, can I bring my own calling plan? And Microsoft, that's part of the reason that Microsoft split out the phone system license and the calling plans. So here's just, uh, and, and they do this through, the, um, through a configuration called direct routing that allows um, customers to connect voice trunks directly from their network to Microsoft Teams or even um, interconnect third-party telephone entities. If you've got a call center or you've got some like really old analog devices that for some reason you can't live without, um, you can use direct routing and keep your existing calling plan. In that case, Microsoft isn't assigning you a number, um, but your team's uh, phone system is integrated with that. So um, really, really flexible plan. Um, of course, that takes away um, a huge financial advantage if, you're, if you have to maintain your own calling plan, but um, just using the, the team's phone system with, for $8 a month allows your users to, um, 
to you have all the flexibility of the different um, tools of Teams with your existing phone system, and maybe you get to the point where at the end of your contract with your existing phone provider, you end that and switch over to Teams. You compare the $12 calling plan and look at your usage and analyze um, all the pluses and minuses of that, and maybe it turns out that the Microsoft Teams phone system is, is better, and then all you have to do is switch um, the license and add a calling plan to that number. Um, so the, the business voice subscription um, is, um, it's available, um, you know, as I said earlier, US, UK, and Canada with international tie-ins. So, um, so again, a really flexible plan. And, um, and this is the slide that uh, really there's, there is a lot on here, but in terms of what does a phone, you know, what does a team's phone system feature? We've got, I've got a lot of questions over the last few weeks about, you know, can it do this? Can it do this? Can it do this? So um, this is uh, by far not a, a completely comprehensive list, but a pretty substantial list of the um, important stuff that uh, that is included just out of the box, doesn't require any additional um, licensing, et cetera. I know that oftentimes on-premise phone systems that are, um, you know, where you've got a phone server and you want to start to, um, you, you're going to add voicemail to users that cost something. You're going to add on hold um, call cues, et cetera. Um, this is all stuff that comes out of the box. So an auto attendant um, lets you create a menu system to enable external and internal callers to locate or place transfer calls within your organization, call queues, um, hunt groups, like all of that uh, stuff. They're really, I don't think, is a configuration of a phone system that we haven't been able to uh, successfully replicate in Teams. Um, but again, um, your, um, your, your business process uh, would dictate uh, whether Teams is going to be a complete solution for you. Um, the other great thing is that it really is, um, for someone who's already got an Office 365 slash Microsoft 365 subscription, um, you're already used to a lot of what these tools look and feel like for managing. Of course, a phone system is different than email and different than file storage, um, but it is, um, you know, it's tools that you're already familiar with. It's a portal that you're already familiar with, and um, I think that really speaks to one of the strengths of, um, of the solution. So, um, you know, uh, simultaneous ring, having your phone um, not only ring at your desk, um, at your computer, but also maybe your cell phone. Um, being able to transfer calls, um, add people to calls, group calling, forward calling, uh, forward call to group, all of that stuff is um, is great. And then, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, Co-workers of mine, like like maybe Kevin or Steve, the call blocking feature is is also very nice for me. Um, so uh, I'm just teasing. I rarely block those guys. I just don't answer. Um, the uh, so the other question I get a lot is um, is Teams only a soft phone solution? So so first of all, what is a soft phone? Um, a soft phone is a software application installed on an internet connected device to make phone calls. Um, Typically, the soft phone is provided by your VoIP provider, in this case would be Microsoft, um, with a user-friendly interface that um, functions much the same way a regular phone would. This interface, you know, obviously allows you to do calling and all the other features. So, so I would say that primarily um, in my um, eight years of being a remote worker, I have only used a soft phone. Um, when I was in an office, we did have a, a phone system in there with desktop phones, but um, but the last eight years, I only used a soft phone. Um, I used the, the um, speaker and mic um, that are on my laptop. Um, that's actually, I'm, I'm using that right now for this webinar, um, the same solution. So, so I know initially um, when a lot of the um, states were starting to um, to issue their orders about uh, about sheltering in place, safer at home, et cetera, um, forcing workers to work remotely. Um, I did hear some stories about, about headsets um, 
the headset sections of, of local electronic stores like Office Max, Best Buy, um, et cetera, even places like Walmart, were looking as picked over as the toilet paper section. Uh, um, so that um, so there was a bit of a run on headsets. Um, I think there probably still is, but that is going to be a uh, um, uh, you know that that's something that the supply chain is stabilizing in the same way it is in the grocery and food um, market. It's uh, it, it's stabilizing as well. Using a headset is um, is is a uh, probably a preferred method if you're depending on what your home office setup is like. In my case, I've got. A room that is my office in my home, and, uh, and along with some mostly pretty good privacy and quiet. So um, I found that uh, transitioning to not using any sort of headset. But if you are the type of organization that wants to use a desk phone or maybe sees the need for that at uh, at a future date, um, certainly uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, of hardware options. Um, as you see here. Um, on the right, there's uh, Crestron's got a $180 phone solution. There's some that are uh, close to $500, of course, that have Bluetooth headsets, et cetera. But uh, you've got some, uh, you've got definitely some options. It is not just a uh, soft phone solution. You've also, besides those um, desk phones, you've got room systems um, with video cameras, et cetera, that are um, certified for use with Microsoft Teams. And then last but not least, um, you've got uh, conference phones. So that is, uh, um, so that is a, uh, um, you know, sort of all of the different handsets. Um, when people ask about what uh, sort of handsets um, uh, I use, um, to be honest, most of the time, um, if I need a handset, I will transfer the call to my cell phone. Um, and uh, and then I've got my cell phone's Bluetooth headset if I need to, but I love having that flexibility. So so basically a really flexible solution um, that has all the features of an enterprise class phone system um, can be run on a uh, on on whatever hardware you have. Unfortunately, um, most existing um, phones. Um, that are that you're using right now for your MyTel or Shortel system um, probably aren't going to be uh, Microsoft Teams certified. So you will definitely have to, uh, to to check on that if you've got existing hardware. That's a question I've also been answering. You know, will my existing phones work? And the answer most of the time is no. Um, if they're um, if they're a couple years old, the Microsoft Teams certified stuff is. Uh, and I should also mention that. Um, Certified Skype for business phones will work with uh, Microsoft Teams at least for the next um, 15 or 16 months. I believe that Microsoft is committing to supporting those devices through June of 2021. Um, but that's something um, as well to consider when you're looking at the investment of a phone solution. Um, it's one thing you know, to, to have the flexibility um, it's it's another to deal with the uh, sort of the cumbersome nature of existing phone of traditional phone business phone solutions where you've got a phone server maybe in uh, in the server rack at your building and when you go to work remotely you can bring your phone with you but in order to connect you need to tie into a VPN and um, in the case of Teams you don't have to worry about any of that um, and their devices are a little bit more flexible um, because of that. So um, now we get to probably the best part of today's um, presentation, um, talking about licensing. So um, I know that that's probably not everyone's favorite topic, but um, as a licensing specialist at Inovia, my days are full of amazing discussions about licensing. And as boring as that may sound to many of you, um, obviously it's an important part of understanding any solution. So. In true Microsoft fashion, they've made the licensing of Teams both really simple and at the same time confusing. Um, and I'll get to uh, what I mean by that here in a minute. Um, we'll just spend a few minutes on this. Um, so basically what's included, um, which Teams uh, or which Microsoft 365 subscriptions include Teams um, on the small business and enterprise plan. I'm just kind of revisiting this for you. So. Uh, so if you've got, if you're on any of these plans, if you have users on any of these plans, um, you already have access to Teams and the full collaboration platform for your um, 
internal um, users. Now, it's not just internal users because you can connect with um, other Microsoft Teams users in other organizations, um, certainly depending on the security settings and um, what your Teams admin has allowed for your organization. Um, so it isn't just internal, but you can't um, make any sort of phone calls to anyone else. You can only make Teams calls, which relies on the team client, meaning the other person that you're calling needs to also be a Microsoft Teams user. But any of these plans include that version of Teams. Um, again, sort of uh, getting into the, the, the confusing part of this as Microsoft is rebranding and, and calling these uh, business essentials now going to be business basic. Premium is now going to be standard, but Microsoft 365 Business is going to be Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Uh, I'm sure Donovan and I, as the licensing guys at Anovia, are going to be uh, um, tripping over our tongues as we try to keep all these straight. But uh, luckily, we've got uh, all kinds of documentation from Microsoft to help keep us straight. But uh, but basically, um, the Teams add-on license. Um, these are the available add-on licenses for Teams and audio conferencing at $4 per user, a phone system at $8 per user, and the domestic calling plan at $12 per user. Again, all of those um, bundled up into a business voice license that saves you $4 um, per user per month and, and costs $20 for a bundle. So again, adding $20 to any of those SKUs gets you um, everything you need. Um, the audio conferencing is just, um, it gives people in your organization, um, if they need to use a phone to call into a Teams meeting rather than using a Teams client, that's what audio conferencing gives them. And then the phone system is a, uh, again, the um, traditional phone capabilities um, added to Teams. Um, in the, you know, the so the audio conferencing and phone system are pretty straightforward domestic calling plans um, and the domestic and international calling plan, $12 per month for the domestic calling plan um, and 24 for the international and domestic. Domestic includes 3,000 minutes, international includes 600 minutes, and again, those are pooled across your organization. So however many users have them, um, uh, you get that total and those are available to the entire group. Again, just a little bit towards the uh, towards the pricing side of things. Um, the calling plan here, I've just shown the inter enterprise SKUs E1, um, E3, and E5. Um, E5 includes the phone license. Um, so um, in this column under requirements, it is not required. So in order to add a Teams um, calling plan to uh, uh, to an E5 SKU, you're only looking at the calling plan price of $12 to add it to either the E3 or E1. Um, it's a $20 total because you need that uh, phone system. So again, um, this is an example of how bundling can perhaps save you money if you've got other um, business use cases for the E5 SKU. Um, include, you know, sort of some Azure Active Directory and, and um, a couple of the other um, additional functionality that E5 gets you, um, which is just, I guess, a good point to remind you that if you've got questions or want to better understand your Microsoft 365 licensing, please reach out to your account manager, um, or better yet, cut out the middle person and reach out to me or Donovan directly, um, and we're happy to help um, take a look at your Office 365 SKUs and um, help you understand if there's any way that you can save money by, by bundling, um, et cetera. So now the uh, the I word. Um, we've moved on from licensing. You've decided that it looks like uh, the right solution, and how do you implement Teams? Um, they say that uh, I guess necessity is the mother of invention, and um, hopefully those of you that have a pressing need to roll out Teams, um, you will be inspired, and, and you'll work within your organization to figure that out. But if you can't, um, we are here to help, and um, and also Microsoft has tons of resources available for you to uh, to sort of um, understand how to roll this out. And so I'm just going to include some of them, um, show some 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 screen caps of some of them, and then 
we're going to have this presentation recorded. Um, we're going to have all the links um, up at the end. So, uh, and I'm not sure if we share the slide deck or not. Angie can uh, tell me about that at the end. But the slide deck obviously includes uh, the links as well. So, um, so there is um, from the Microsoft Customer Success Kit. Um, there are all of these um, resources for IT admin guidance, the user communication, um, user guidance. We've got um, you know the different implementation phases. So this is a uh, um, you know this is one of these um, theoretical perfect uh, um, scenarios where you've got three stages where you're envisioning and then onboarding and then driving value. You've got all these different uh, um, stages in the implementation phase, or I should say phases in the implementation process. Unfortunately, uh, if you're like some of our customers that we've been working with the past few weeks, the uh, the implementation process is, um, holy crap, we need some uh, tools for our people to work remotely. What do we have? What are we paying for? Um, what can we leverage? And in that case, uh, we're used to working in those scenarios as well. Um, and you know, you don't need to have uh, all the all the phases to get you a successful implementation. Um, another you know, use case scenario for the different uh, departments within your organization. Um, so, so all of that being said, in in, in terms of the tools of, of utilization, um, I did want to kind of research and see what. Uh, what sort of utilization we had within our own customer group. So um, I hid information so I wouldn't um, I wouldn't uh, um, embarrass anyone by uh, by but but this was an Excel spreadsheet. I exported our uh, our customer utilization. Um, this first column here is is the license assigned. So basically any license that uh, that one of our end users are paying for, um, how much of those licenses are are being assigned to users within the organization um, and that uh, we're at 96 percent there so that makes sense you don't want to be paying for licenses that aren't um, uh, assigned to your users especially um, because the licensing portal um, through Inovia is so flexible and easy to use that uh, you can um, provision your own licensing you don't even have to talk to anyone at Inovia if you don't want to um, you can raise and lower your quantities on any of these licensing. I am sort of interested to see who this um, person is that has a 300% license assigned. Um, that's interesting, but uh, but basically, so 100% of all of our licenses are assigned. What are people using in that license? I just took uh, um, Teams, Exchange, and SharePoint. Um, Exchange that, you know, 60 some percent of our Office 365 customers are using Exchange. Um, 33% are using Skype uh, for business or Teams, and uh, and that is where um, and, and that that number is low. Uh, we're slightly ahead of uh, the Microsoft average, which is just under 30%. But uh, there's a huge room for improvement here. Now, this could be low because a lot of the organizations have been traditional brick and mortar. Everyone in an office, um, only a few people being remote. Um, so I do expect as um, our roles and work environment change. Um, and shifts towards more remote workers that this uh, utilization will go up. But uh, but there are a lot of people on uh, on today's call probably that that have teams available to them that aren't using them and the licenses aren't even assigned. So so um so that is uh, is something that uh, that I found interesting that I wanted to share with you. Um, something else I guess to consider as we're getting towards the end here, um, just the competition and and who's um, you know who is Microsoft competing with um, in, in the communication collaboration market? Obviously, Slack that has been around a while. There was talk of Microsoft buying Slack before they went to uh, Microsoft Teams. Very strong player, and Zoom is uh, has drawn a lot of attention recently um, in in both the press and as well as the stock market. And the shares going up uh, while the stock market was crashing around it. Um, and, and obviously, great platforms. Um, I would just point out nowhere near the collaboration and integration um, and flexibility as there is with Microsoft Teams, especially if you are an Office 365 customer already. If you're not an Office 365 customer, then uh, looking at something like Zoom, which gives you the ability to kind of video conference and uh, instant message and make, um, make VoIP calls, but not um, PBX calls, 
um, is, you know, is a, a great value solution. I know that there are a lot of um, school districts that are using um, Zoom to, uh, to because of its uh, low price point and the powers of its free features to, um, to communicate with their students who are, you know, have transferred from in-person learning to digital learning. Um, unfortunately, you know, they're starting to really um, get hammered on security. Um, and you know the fact that maybe as an enterprise platform they weren't quite ready for it. I saw stuff as recently as this morning about um, holes in Zoom allowing uh, uh, allowing hackers to to steal your Windows um, user ID, um, login information, some really terrible private information. Um, and the only point I wanted to make is not to really badmouth these um, solutions because they're both um, great great solutions but just to remind you that if you're already on office 365 um, and as these communication platforms become more important for you supporting remote workers um, microsoft's platform is something you're already used to dealing with um, the the um, integration the the fact that um, you already know the tools for managing assigning licenses etc you don't have to uh, ask your users to remain to remember any additional passwords or your account information it's all um you know especially if you've got it um tied in with azure active directory or azure connect you've got the ability to um to just have one password that connects you with everything and, and using those tools um is is something that uh is you know using i should say not even tools but your existing expertise in the microsoft space is something that shouldn't be discounted either um, so now for the offer, um, again, this is, this is brand new and really exciting to us, but, uh, if you don't have teams yet, you can get it, um, from Anovia for free for six months. Um, that is, uh, and, and essentially what, um, what we're giving you is an Office 365 E1 SKU, um, typically $8 um, per user per month. And, um, and we are giving it, um, to you. Up to 3,000 licenses um, is what Microsoft is limiting us at, but uh, and, and this gives you the licensing. This doesn't give you the ability to make any uh, um, any phone calls. This isn't a full phone solution. This is the internal teams. But uh, for people who aren't on Office 365 yet or are only paying for their Office desktop applications through Office and want to try. Um, this E1 SKU is is huge, um, and getting it for six months is is really a uh, um, a strong offer. So, what is included in here? Um, it isn't just Teams, as I said. Exchange Online Plan One, um, Flow, or Power Automate. I guess I should update that. Um, Forms Planner, the Whiteboard, um, obviously Teams, um, the Office Online apps, um, and that as well as Power Apps, SharePoint stream sway and yammer so full e1 subscription um, provisioned um, you can move your email to office 365 though that's not a requirement they will will set up a, a dummy domain for you and um and you can still use the application and test it um, it is really great to uh, a really great possibility for the users that are considering this um, to to take on an e1 trial and then um, you want to investigate the phone solution with this. Um, add a couple $20 office SKUs to this um, E1. You're going to have to pay for those $20 office SKUs. But, but um, you know, being able to, to test um, and understand the call routing possibilities to introduce maybe to some of the users in your team, um, it's a, it's a great it, it's a great offer at that's really well timed. So. Um, so consider that um, if you've got questions about it uh, again um, your account managers are happy to help um, as well as uh, as the rest of the team at Anovia to help answer questions in terms of, of the licensing aspect of what this trial involves but six months up to 3,000 users um, and that's uh, because it's an enterprise plan and e-series SKU it goes up that high um, and uh, and feel free to reach out and take advantage especially the people who don't have any of the office 365 service um, included SKUs right now 
So um, that gets to the end of, uh, of licensing. Um, last but not least, there's um, in terms of the resources, um, I wanted to, to call out for our nonprofits, Microsoft Teams training has offered some, some actually free training, some stuff that is normally paid for stuff that's like uh, $75, $100 for the, for the training, the digital learning. Um, they're making that available for free for nonprofits for the next 60 days. I've got that link included here. Um, also, some of the stuff that I mentioned, the workshop kits, um, quick start guides, all of these links um, go to really robust Microsoft documentation that can help take you through whether you're a, um, an IT admin or a, a business user that's looking at, uh, at sort of the, the process and, and features of this. Um, all of these are going to be available to you, um, as well as just resources out on the web. Um, the team's roadmap, the technical community, user voice, and, and driving adoption. So these are all resources that Microsoft has put together for you to help with the team's um, rollout and um, adoption in your organization. We've got uh, also a Microsoft Teams Quick Start YouTube channel. So just uh, just the, the bare bones of what you'll need to get started with, uh, with um, Teams. And it's all uh, video content, so uh, really hands-on functional. And most of them are, you know, in the 10-minute mark. I guess there's uh, there's one of them that's that's 20, but uh, but a really good uh, resource as well to get on. And then, last but not least, um, I guess this one is a little fuzzy. I apologize for that. Um, there, you've got uh, Microsoft tools like Power BI that uh, you can use to monitor your call utilization and call. Um, and call quality within uh, within Office 365. So using a, a, a one Office 365 tool, Power BI, to monitor um, the usage and quality of another tool like the Teams phone system. Um, all of this stuff is is readily available on the internet um, for you free of charge um, with your Office 365 subscription. Last but not least, um, our team at Anovia, anovia.com forward slash Microsoft dash Teams. Um, we'll have information, um, including a link probably in the future to this recorded webinar. Um, Holly, Gary, and Gino have all presented on um, different aspects of Microsoft Team. Uh, Gino did a great presentation on apps that can be added to Teams. Holly did one on collaboration and communication with Teams, and Gary did a blog post on, um, so, uh, talking about um, Teams adoption and, and how great he's found. It. So, so um, don't forget uh, Anovia as well. And I think um, that that brings me to the end of my content. So, Angie, um, let me put up the uh, the questions slide here, and you can let me know if there are any questions. I think I see some hands up. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, we do have a couple questions that came through. The first one is, is it possible to interface with dynamic CRM and automatically pull up a customer card when a call comes in? Okay, so um, there is a ton of um, integration points um, that you can integrate teams into other solutions and especially the Microsoft stack um, that is not done, that integration does not happen out of the box. Um, the the sort of we've also had this question I guess asked from um, from the NAV or Business Central standpoint if a um, if a call coming in can uh, can check um, the customer list and see if it can it uh, tie tie those two entities together in the same way that uh, it could do it in Dynamic CRM or Dynamic 365 for sales out of the box it doesn't do that there are a lot of third party integrators that have um, very inexpensive solutions that tie those things together. Okay, thank you. And if I want to get the trial, how can I accept the Anovia customer request link? Okay, so um, that is a, a, a great question that we've been answering as, um, I assume that means the CSP portal. We've got to, uh, um, it seems that the easiest way to do that is to initiate um, is a, initiate a trial um, before we send you the link. And um, I would say that uh, reach out to me, and I'm glad to uh, to work through it. In some cases, it is uh, not to scare anyone, but in some cases, it has taken me um, 
it, it's taken me uh, up to probably 45 minutes to work with a customer to get them through this process, especially if they've already got a Windows Live ID associated with a non-work account. Um, but uh, I'd say the short answer to that question is to, um, is to initiate a trial with Microsoft Direct, which allows you to create the account um, and then um, the and then adding Inovia to that via the link we send is is the easiest way to do that. And again, I'm happy to uh, um, I'm happy to to walk through anyone um, whether you're a customer or not with with how that works. Okay, thank you. And someone asked about um, how soon will this recording be up? Um, we are gonna do our best to get it up as soon as possible by the end of the day today. So hold tight on that. And um, I'll be sending everyone uh, a link to that as well, even if you did attend. And then the other question that we have for you, Jeff, is are you having a podcast about this? <laughs> Could you please block Steve from asking any questions? Yes, um, actually, we will be, uh, um, Steve Waltz and I, for those of you um, who aren't in the podcast world, um, Steve and I do a podcast called the Inovia Conversation, where we talk about um, all things um, Inovia, Business Central, Dynamics, um, Azure. We, we talk about the whole Office 365 stack. We will be uh, having a podcast on this as well. I believe we're recording that podcast tomorrow. So that will be up on the podcast platform. Um, uh, whatever platform, I guess, you consume your podcasts on, um, that will be up, uh, I would say, um, early next week, if not uh, later this week. All right. Um, anything else, Angie? I don't see any more questions that have come through. If anybody does have anything, um, now is the time to ask. Or if you'd like to reach out to Jeff personally, uh, you may do so. He has his information up there on the screen. Awesome. Well, then, uh, thanks, everyone. And um, let's see. I think, um, do you want to say anything about our, our future webinars, Angie, or are we OK to wrap? Uh, yes, I will, Jeff. Thank you for presenting today and to everyone on the webinar. Uh, we thank you for joining us. And if you're watching on demand, uh, we thank you for taking the time out to join um, us for this webinar. And tomorrow we actually have two webinars. We have two control presenting on your data MS, get control with authorization solutions for BC NAV. And then we have True Commerce in the afternoon presenting on will you take advantage of a commerce network? So check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And as Jeff mentioned, um, we do have our podcast going on, so you can check out more on our podcast, which is called the Anovia Conversation. And you can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's anovia.com slash podcast. Sorry, that's a mouthful. Um, so check out our selection and subscribe so you'll be notified when those new episodes air. All right, well, we thank you again, everyone, and we hope to see you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.